Let's talk about pistol grip shotguns 922R compliant and the new rule. What's up Wolverine? Today we're going to be talking about the new pistol stabilizing brace rule and how it affects pistol grip shotguns like the TAC-14 and Mossberg Shockwave and also imported pistols. I've spoken to the ATF and I think I know where a lot of the confusion is coming in. So I'm going to try to clear it up for you. Before I do that, I want to do some disclaimers. First, do I like the new rule? No, I think it's trash. And if you don't want to comply with it, don't comply with it. If you want to comply with it, comply with it. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I believe that every gun law is an infringement on my rights, and I just want to get rid of the ATF totally. So I don't only want to get rid of the rules. I'm going to get rid of the ATF in whole. But I did talk to them and cleared up some stuff. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the misconceptions and why there are misconceptions about the new rule, because I think that is more important. And when I point it out, it will be obvious to everyone, and then we can get good information out there. I spoke to Eric Longnecker of the ATF on record, and he is authorized to speak for the ATF. So I have everything in writing. Okay, so Eric Longnecker is saying everything above page 268 is not authoritative because the new rule starts on page 268, specifically the bottom of page 268. What the ATF did is include the draft rule and everything. So the shock waves and the TAC 14s. Those are not touched by the new rule. What people are pointing to is on page 47, where it talks about how all letters are revoked. Specifically, footnote 73, which reads, As mentioned above, any classification that provides that a pistol grip shotgun is not an NFA firearm is no longer valid or authoritative and should be resubmitted to fat D for evaluation. So that is what everyone's reading and that is no longer valid according to the ATF themselves because that is the draft rule and not the final rule. Basically what they're trying to say is anything above 268 is valid. Anything that came before 268, page 268, is not authoritative. Is that true? I don't really know. We'll have to see. But I have it in writing. That is what they are saying. So we could nail them to the wall in court if they try to walk that back. That also brings me to 922R compliance. 922R compliance says that a rifle has to be made with a certain number of American parts and a certain number of foreign parts. Basically, you have to have a mostly American rifle. A lot of these pistols that are foreign made have stocks on them and now are considered SBR in the eyes of the ATF. I asked about this. The ATF is stating it is only from the time of assembly from parts. After that time, you can put a pistol stabilizing device on your pistol and make it an SBR in the eyes of the ATF and not have to worry about 922R compliance. Mr. Longnecker says you can submit that pistol like any other pistol through e-forms. I then asked what happens if you buy a pistol with this pistol stabilizing brace that was added at the time of assembly. It seems by reading the rule that you would have to turn that in or destroy it. But I never got an answer back. So let's go ahead and talk about 922R compliance and prosecution of 922R violations. There has never been a case that has been prosecuted with 922R as the main reason. And I don't think that there will be. In fact, I don't know how they would know if the pistol brace was added after you bought the pistol or before. I don't think they would. So I don't think this is a real concern. It is something that we have to be aware of and keep an eye on, but I don't think it is a real concern. This brings me to the bigger point. There are really, really smart people that are really skilled 
and knowledge of firearms and also firearms law that are at odds with each other. And that just goes to show you how poorly written the rule is. If some of the top attorneys in the country cannot agree on what the rule says, then there is an issue. The ATF has a tendency to write these rules in a way where they are malleable, where they can change it over time by just reinterpreting stuff. And I think it is time for Congress to get involved and to flop down the ATF over their practices. All right, that's it. Sunday night, I'll be doing a charity live stream to raise money for Richard Hoffman, who is an awesome guy and a mentor to me. He is in bad shape, and we can help him out by donating a little bit of money. So tune in Sunday night at 8 p.m. for a lot of really good guests and a lot of fun. I will be streaming for several hours. I think I'm going to go from 8 p.m. to midnight, and I think we're going to have a great time. All right, guys, thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Stay ever vigilant. Stay ever free. Keep in the fight. I am out of here, Wolverines mother. And remember to go to thegundies.com and vote for me for top voices of the 2A. You didn't think I was going to forget, did you?